Chapter 14 The Christian Perspective 1. Modernism The history of religious thought after Kant is largely an echo of Kant. The extensive success of men like Barth, Reinhold Niebuhr, Tillich and others has been largely due to their manifestation in theology of the principles of modern philosophy. They give us variations on a common theme. Their difference lies in the concerted attempt to force modern philosophy onto the biblical message. The fundamental principle of modernism has been to express the spirit of the age and to adapt Christianity to it. A changing theology has been accepted because of a basic belief in an evolving truth. Modernist liberalism in the Church has presented itself as the spirit of open-minded investigation of facts without any prior assumptions or commitments. The method is defined as the empirical inductive method of science which is sharply contrasted with the alleged dogmatic, deductive method of the conservative theology. Its basic aspect is humanism. The decline of the naive modernism of the pre-World War I era did not mean a return to orthodoxy. Cornelius van Til rightly termed it the new modernism in his study of that subject, calling attention to the identity of the basic premises of modernism and neo-orthodoxy. The theology of crisis is to be classified with modern theology rather than with orthodoxy in its choice of fundamental distinctions. Both modernism and dialecticism hold to the existence of two equally original worlds, the world of brute factual existence and the world of meaning. The differences between them are such as to leave this basic distinction untouched. In the 1960s, the theologians began to write about the death of God theology, as though a new day had dawned. According to Altizer, hopefully a new day has dawned for theology, a revolutionary day in which the gradual but decisive transformation of faith that has occurred in the modern world will be recognised, even though doing so may promise the end of most, if not all of the established religious forms of the West. At the moment, and for perhaps well into the future, the most radical theological revolution is promised by the death of God theology, a theology grounded by one means or another in the death of the Christian God. Altizer and his death of God associates are more than a century or two behind the times. Philosophy had long before them proclaimed the death of God, and Nietzsche's work was an insane dance of premature jubilation. Altizer has not entered into the world's new day, nor is he the witness to a new dawn. Like C.S. Lewis's Inhabitants of Hell in The Great Divorce Who Confused the Grey of Coming Eternal Nights with the Coming of Dawn, so the Death of God school of theology is likewise confused. They have entered the day of man in its twilight. Nietzsche's new day was madness, and the new day facing the world of modernity is a day of reckoning. There have, however, been other voices whose philosophy, because it has run against the grain of modernity, has not been as widely publicised as have been the preachers of humanism, but their influence has still been very important. The school of presuppositionalists, including H. Doyewirt, D. H. T. H. Vorlehofe, K. Schiller and others has been notable in its work and influence. Our concern here is with its leading American thinker, Cornelius van Til, whose work, The Metaphysics of Apologetics, 1931, was written prior to Follerhofe's The Necessity of a Christian Logic or Methodology, 